The old man in the cold saved the orphan with the child, and upon bringing them home, was stunned by the groom's reaction to his daughter's fiancé. Little Liam, five years old, rubbed his sleepy eyes, not understanding why his mother had to get up so early. Ash understood her son perfectly well. The last thing she wanted in the world was to leave this warm and cozy home in the cold, especially with her little son. But there was nothing to be done. I'm very sorry, but I have to raise the rent, Grace Vincent, the landlady of the house Ash rented, announced. Oh, and starting today, you'll have to pay two months' rent in advance. But you know my situation, the tenant replied, flustered. I have nowhere to get the money to pay in advance. I regret it. But you have your problems, and I have mine, Grace Vincent cut in. Tonight, you can stay, but first light tomorrow, you are leaving. If I see you here, I'll evict you with the police. Okay, Grace Vincent, Ash nodded. I hear you. The young mother knew she couldn't sway the landlady. Unfortunately, Ash's words didn't touch her. She was resolutely indifferent to the fact that a little child, who had recently been ill, would wander with his mother in the cold. This woman was only interested in money, so she had already found other tenants who were more financially capable than Ash. However, it wasn't just about that. Ash understood perfectly well that her dire situation was far from the only, and perhaps not even the decisive argument. It was because Ash had caught the eye of Robert, Grace's son. Ash's attempts to rebuff Robert were firmly stopped, and a rejected man could become a very dangerous enemy. Ash had no idea what Robert might have told his mother, but the result was far from comforting. Either way, the mother believed her son, a loafer and drunk who had recently returned from prison. She had nothing left to do but take her little son by the hand and leave the house in the cold weather. Ash and the child trudged along the cold streets. The girl loved her hometown very much, because that's where she was truly happy, and her parents were alive and well. For Ash, this city was the most beautiful in the world, and she didn't care that she had nothing to compare it to. Ash knew one thing, this city was her small homeland, and that was why it was the best in the world. The girl's father had died during a riot, and she and her mother were evaluated to a neighboring town. The new place of residence seemed cold in every sense. The people were unwelcoming, and early March was not as warm as back home. They were assigned a small house without amenities in a residential area on the outskirts of town. Well, at least they had a roof over their heads. Trouble seldom comes alone. Within a week of their arrival, Jenny Anders fell ill. The doctors suspected pneumonia but flatly refused to hospitalize her. No documents, the paramedic said curtly. That means she's not entitled to care. But how can that be? Ash stammered. We just arrived a week ago and haven't had time to sort out the paperwork. That's not our problem, the paramedic shrugged. We can't take your mother to the hospital. Even if we did, our chief physician would order us to send her back. That's the policy. I see, Ash replied with a defeated tone. A few days later, Jenny Anders passed away. Fortunately, the neighbors were kind and helped as much as they could. So, Ash, only 19 years old, was left completely alone. She had almost no money, and to arrange a burial allowance, she needed documents, which also meant additional expenses. Ash got a job as a promoter. She handed out advertising leaflets. One day, when the exhausted girl sat down on a bench in the shade to rest, a charming young man approached her. Tired, he smiled. Understatement, Ash smiled back. Yeah, it's tough work, the guy said. It seems so simple, but it's anything but. Did you also work as a promoter? Why did I work, he smirked. I'm working here now. I've been watching you for three days, and you haven't once looked my way. You're Ash, aren't you? Yes, the girl replied, surprised. Did this charming guy actually find out her name on purpose? I'm Peter, he said. Let's get acquainted. Ash, how about we go into that cafe and celebrate our meeting? But I don't have any money, she said, feeling embarrassed. Don't worry about money. I'm inviting you, so it's on me. 
Is it all right if I address you informally? That's fine. I actually feel like an old lady when people use you with me. I feel the same way, Peter laughed, not like an old lady, of course, but like an old man. He made a mock serious face that made Ash laugh heartily. The guy seemed amusing to her. Besides, there was no one in her life at the moment with whom she felt at ease or could trust. At first, everything was wonderful. The young people spent a lot of time together, and Peter turned out to be quite a character in terms of entertainment. They went not only to cafes and movies, where they always found secluded spots for kisses, but also to the forest, the fields, and the river. Peter told her stories about these places. Sometimes Ash doubted the accuracy of his tales, but it didn't matter. Peter told them so engagingly, and she loved listening to him. At the advertising agency, they were referred to as the fiancé and fiancé. For the first time in a long while, Ash felt like she was truly living rather than merely existing. Everything changed when Ash discovered she was pregnant. It happened a couple of months after their meeting. Well, sweetheart, men don't get pregnant, Peter shrugged, so this is primarily your problem. You should have taken care of protection. How was I supposed to know? Well, anyway, I'm pregnant, Ash said, almost crying. And I don't think it's just my problem. Come on, what do you expect from me? That I'll marry you? Why on earth would I want a refugee and a pauper? I have other plans for my life. Being a promoter is just a temporary gig for me. You have nothing else to catch here. But you should take responsibility too, she cried. How could she have been so wrong? She had met a sweet and charming guy with a great sense of humor. Or had he been replaced by someone else? I don't owe anyone anything, Peter said firmly. However, I can offer one option. What option? Ash's voice betrayed a hint of hope. I think you know what I'm talking about. Fine, I'll pay for the abortion. No, not that. Ash, listen, Peter's tone changed. You are young and beautiful. Why would you ruin your youth? I'm sure this isn't the life you dreamed of. You need to study and develop yourself. Make up your mind, Ash said with disdain. Am I supposed to study or just have no future? She left with a sense of pride. Ash had already sorted out her documents, so unlike her poor mother, she could count on proper medical care. She registered for prenatal care, genuinely relieved that at least she would be giving birth like a civilized person. And being a single mother, well, she wasn't the first, nor would she be the last. The most important thing was that the baby was born healthy. She worked as a promoter, took on a side job as a courier, and worked hard until her pregnancy became obvious. A promoter or a courier with a belly is quite an original sight, Ash thought. I'm afraid the boss won't appreciate it. She prudently began saving money for the baby's needs and for living expenses. Once her belly could no longer be hidden under any clothing, Ash stayed at home. But she didn't think about idling. When Ash was in school, she attended a knitting club and was quite good at it. She bought needles and yarn and started making things for the baby. One day, her neighbor Mia, a woman in her thirties, came over. When Ash and her mother had first arrived, Mia had helped them with clothes and groceries. What are you up to? The neighbor asked. Knitting. You know how to knit? Look at that. You're doing a great job. Oh, stop it. Ash waved her hand. I used to knit really well, but I've forgotten most of it. Don't worry, you'll remember everything. You could knit to order since you're at home now. Who would order from me? She scoffed. Well, post an ad online. Take pictures of your creations and see what happens. Besides, Mia said with a sly smile, word of mouth still works wonders. So, Ash started knitting on demand. Five people responded to her ad, which wasn't too bad. Moreover, her neighbors in the private sector lined up to place their orders. It seemed that Ash had secured not only a reliable source of income, but one with more interesting ingredients as well. When her baby boy Liam turned one, the residents of the private sector learned about the upcoming demolition of the houses and the planned relocation. 
Ash braced for impact. You're not entitled to new housing, the official at the administration office told her. You don't have citizenship. But I'm registered here, Ash protested. That means I have the same rights as everyone else. I checked. But the official was unyielding. Priority is given to those who have lived in the city for a long time, she declared. What nonsense is this? The young mother exclaimed. You're obligated to provide at least temporary housing. Are you going to teach me how to do my job? The official squinted. If you're so knowledgeable, go back and assert your rights there. But I have a small child, Ash said with a trembling voice, trying not to cry, reminding herself that she had to stay strong for Liam. We have nowhere to go. You should have thought about that before you got into bed, the woman replied, turning to the window to signal that the audience was over. Back home, Ash began searching the internet for rental properties. However, some demanded exorbitant payments, often requiring at least a quarter in advance. Others were unwilling to rent to someone with a small child. And still others were not interested in dealing with a refugee without a permanent job. Two weeks later, Ash found a suitable place. It was a well-built private house in a nice, well-maintained neighborhood. The price Grace Vincent asked for seemed quite reasonable. Ash had lived in that house for four years and would likely have stayed there for a long time. However, Grace Vincent's son, who had returned from prison, threw Ash's plans into disarray. As dawn approached, the first pedestrians appeared on the street. They walked past the young woman and her child with indifference, oblivious to their plight in the cold and hunger. Ash, too, was oblivious to the passers-by. She simply walked on, holding Liam's hand tightly with one hand and carrying a small sports bag with their few belongings in the other. Mom, I'm cold and hungry, the little boy complained. I'll figure something out, Liam, his mother replied, forcing a smile. But what could she possibly come up with? The bitter cold cut through to her bones, and Ash herself would have given half her life for a cup of hot, fragrant tea and a warm bath, or at least a shower. Money was nearly non-existent, and the best she could hope for was a room in a cheap hotel with minimal amenities. Lost in her bleak thoughts, she didn't notice when she let go of Liam's hand as he became interested in a playground and wandered into the street. A moment later, the screeching of brakes pierced the air, and a strong, firm hand pulled Ash back. Everything happened so quickly that she barely grasped what was going on. Stunned, Ash looked up and saw an elderly man with an attractive, almost aristocratic face framed by a small beard. His radiant blue eyes were full of kindness. Are you in such a hurry to meet your end? The stranger asked with a smile. No, Ash replied timidly, returning his smile. I just got a bit distracted and stepped off the curb. It was then that Ash realized she had been mere seconds away from death. The fact that she hadn't been run over by a car was nothing short of a miracle. Liam, who had been exploring the playground, ran up to Ash. With gratitude, Ash looked at the elderly man, who unexpectedly offered. How about we go to a cafe? We can eat and warm up. What do you think? Yes, I want to go to a cafe, Liam responded eagerly. Ash looked down. She really wanted to go to a cafe, but who knew what the prices would be like? Don't worry, the stranger said, accurately interpreting Ash's concern. It's my treat. I'm paying. Ash's heart lifted, and she nodded. Within two minutes, the trio was introduced and seated in a warm, cozy cafe. They enjoyed delicious apple pie that melted in their mouths, washed it down with hot tea, and the loquacious old man began to talk about himself. The new acquaintance introduced himself as Johnny Clark, and to Ash's surprise, he turned out to be a successful businessman. His multi-million dollar assets were invested in several of the country's most reliable banks. Wow! Ash exclaimed. Yes, the businessman agreed. And then Ash realized that Johnny seemed to want to say something more, something that had perhaps been troubling him for a long time. But what did that have to do with her and her son? It appeared that the elderly man had gathered his courage. Ash, I apologize in advance for the intrusive question, but I understand that you and your son are without a place to live, he asked. 
Ash blushed deeply, looking away in embarrassment, and Johnny hurried to smooth over the awkwardness. Please forgive me, I'm a straightforward person, he said, almost apologetically. I'm not asking out of curiosity, I simply want to help. Ash thought, do I look so destitute that it's obvious to everyone? Realizing there was no point in hiding anymore, Ash reluctantly nodded. And indeed, why hide, she thought as if there's a line of people waiting to help me. Seeing that his assumption was correct, Johnny Clark, being a businessman, got straight to the point. A year and a half ago, he began in a somber voice, a terrible tragedy struck my family. My son Anderson was killed in a car accident along with his pregnant wife. Oh my God! Ash exclaimed. I'm so sorry for your loss. No, no, Anderson is alive. Johnny shook his head. He's just become disabled. Anderson had always dreamed of having his own children. Now he's fallen into a deep depression. He refuses to get treatment, saying that without Lily and their unborn child, life has lost its meaning. Well, that's understandable, Ash nodded. Anyone in his position would probably fall into depression. Yes, agreed the businessman. That's why I want to offer you a position as a housekeeper. Anderson will see your little boy, and who knows, he might warm up and return to life. Of course, in return, I'll provide you with accommodation and everything else you need. Ash was, to put it mildly, astonished. Could it really be that this wealthy man was willing to let strangers into his home so easily? Johnny continued. I also have a daughter, Aaliyah, he said, and noticing Ash's confusion, he added, but don't mind her. She won't be a bother to you. Ash thought to herself, his daughter isn't the one moving in with me. It's the other way around. Johnny continued, Aaliyah has a small business, a personal life, and she's very busy, so. Ash looked closely at the wealthy man sitting before her, who seemed to have only one problem, how not to lose his riches. Just ten minutes ago, she would have bet that the old man was happy. She couldn't deny that all his wealth was earned through hard work. But now, in his old age, Johnny should be enjoying everything he has to the fullest. He probably travels often, not to mention his beautiful, cozy home, dining out not just at cafes, but at restaurants, strolling through supermarkets and filling his cart with groceries without worrying about running out of money. And here it turns out that the successful businessman's family has serious issues. And a single mother like Ash could help solve them. Yes, life is unpredictable. But the real question is whether there's a catch here. And should she accept the offer? The rich have their own quirks. Today you're needed, and tomorrow you might be asked to leave as if they were just playing. For them, ordinary people are expendable. But on the other hand, what am I really losing, the young woman thought. Nothing, really. I have nowhere else to go. And he doesn't seem like a scheming villain. Though Ash had never seen a villain in real life, only in movies, and they sometimes show the most outrageous things. With a deep breath, Ash made her decision. After a brief pause for effect, Ash gave her agreement. Seeing the spark of hope in the businessman's eyes, she felt like a benevolent fairy. They left the cafe and headed to the parking lot. Please, the man said with a smile, opening the doors of a sleek black car. On the way home, he told Ash that he and his wife, Noel, were expecting an important guest that evening, so all attention will be focused on him, he concluded. And who is this guest? Ash asked. Aaliyah has a fiancé. The wedding is coming up, and Noel and I are very eager to meet our daughter's chosen one, he replied. Ash, do you have any special requests? She shrugged. Her main concern was that Liam was comfortable, everything else was secondary. Having food and a roof over her head was already a lot. When they arrived at the house, the table was already set. Judging by the number of place settings, a lot of guests were expected. It seemed that this fiancé was indeed an important person, Ash concluded. Johnny and his wife went to the kitchen and talked for about ten minutes. When they came out, Noel gave Ash a warm smile and said, Ash, let me show you your room. The room was impressive. 
It was decorated in peach and beige tones, with a comfortable, spacious bed, a coffee-colored suede armchair, and cream organza curtains. It was cozy and tastefully done. So, what do you think? Do you like it? I do. It's very cozy and beautiful, Ash smiled and nodded. Now let's go see your son's room. By the way, what's his name? Liam. The room designated for her son was decorated in bright, cheerful colors, just as a child's room should be. It had many toys and even a computer. A computer, the child exclaimed happily, and Ash felt a pang of sadness. Liam had only seen computers in pictures and store windows they never entered because they couldn't afford to. I'm glad you like it, Noel said. Now let's go to the table. I would have offered you a bath, but I'm afraid there's no time now, so maybe later. To the table? Ash asked, somewhat confused. But, what's the matter? The hostess asked with a smile. I just feel a bit awkward, the young woman hesitated. I see nothing awkward, Johnny said as he entered the room. Please, make yourself at home. Within five minutes, all the guests were seated at the table, which was lavishly set for the occasion of meeting Aaliyah's fiancé. The most interesting thing was that the beloved of the host's daughter was inexplicably late. He'll be here any minute, Aaliyah said. We just spoke to him on the phone. That's not very honorable, her father remarked. A real man should be punctual. That's how you earn the trust of those you'll be working with. Dad, his daughter exclaimed, casting him a reproachful look. We're not here to work. All right, all right, I'll be quiet. The head of the family raised his hands in surrender. Meanwhile, Ash had met the members of the Johnny Clark family, including his paralyzed son, Anderson. They seemed like nice people to her. Well, I'll be, she thought with surprise, they have no arrogance at all. In Ash's understanding, people living in such a house would have a whole army of servants, but she saw none. Noel, will your special roast pork with lingonberry sauce be served? One of the invited women asked. Of course, the hostess smiled. She even cooks herself, Ash thought with respect, and her sympathy for Johnny's wife grew. Ash answered the family's questions with restraint, joked, and, to her own surprise, quickly felt at ease. The guests didn't seem snobbish either, at least at first glance. The dinner was lively and very warm. In the living room, Aaliyah's fiancé appeared, and Ash recognized Peter, Liam's father. She struggled to stifle a gasp of astonishment. At first, Ash thought she was dreaming and pinched herself on the cheek. But no, she was awake. Standing before her was none other than Peter, and unfortunately, he showed no signs of disappearing into oblivion. Of course, Peter immediately recognized his former fiancé but gave no sign of it. If Peter was taken aback, it was only for the first few seconds. Then, as if nothing had happened, he settled at the table and began to enjoy the festive dinner with gusto. Ash felt nauseous. She even paled and quickly averted her gaze. She didn't want to look at the person who had betrayed her five years ago. It hurt her not so much for herself, but for Liam. Peter hadn't changed much. He still had the same self-assured look and a consumptive attitude towards everything in the world. It didn't take much intelligence to understand one simple fact. Peter was not marrying Aaliyah for love, but for her parents' money. Ash physically could not remain at the same table with a traitor. It became hard for her to breathe. Therefore, she decided it was best to excuse herself and go to another room. She covered her eyes with her hands and let the tears flow. Fate really decided to keep mocking me, she thought with frustration. Ash was so absorbed in her gloomy thoughts that she didn't notice Johnny slipping in after her. After observing his guest for a moment, he approached her resolutely and asked gently, Is something wrong? Has someone upset you? Unknowingly, Ash poured out the whole truth to the old man. Johnny's face immediately changed, and he clenched his fists tightly. What he couldn't tolerate was betrayal, and the shameful secret of his daughter's fiancé shocked him deeply. I won't let this go, Johnny thought. No, the head of the family did not publicly cause a scene. 
he courageously waited until the end of dinner and then took the scoundrel outside to express his thoughts. And as for the upcoming engagement, Johnny Clark concluded, you can forget about it. Get out of here, scoundrel, and quickly. It was already the second week of Ash and Liam's stay in the successful businessman's house. She had developed excellent relations with all the household members except Aaliyah. The entrepreneur's daughter, believing that Ash was the cause of the hatred toward Peter, took an immediate dislike to her. Johnny Clark did not explain to his daughter the reason for the quarrel with her fiancé, but Aaliyah felt it was all Ash's fault. The wealthy heiress did not miss an opportunity to belittle the young woman. The next day during dinner, Ash asked the hostess, Noel, do you happen to have anything to read? What do you like to read? The businessman's wife inquired. It's strange that she can even read at all, Aaliyah murmured quietly but loud enough for everyone to hear. Romance novels, the young woman replied, choosing to ignore the hostess's daughter's comment. Aaliyah snorted. Interesting what you could possibly understand about love? Well, in that regard, you're not far off from me, Ash thought with a smirk. Well, I'm a given case, but why did you fall short? Couldn't a girl from such a circle find a more decent fiancé? And Peter didn't even try to justify himself. But she kept her thoughts to herself. Noel gave her daughter a reproachful look, but Aaliyah was not at all phased. Unperturbed, Aaliyah continued. Hey, Ash, or whatever your name is, maybe you'd like to share your experience. You seem to have some. Certainly, I do. But let's save that conversation for another time. Johnny cut off the quarrel. Noel, thank you for the dinner. Everything was very delicious. A few days later, Noel noticed that Ash needed to acquire at least a few decent clothes. Aaliyah, you should take her shopping, the mother suggested. She genuinely hoped that her daughter would befriend Ash and stop picking on her, suggest something. As you know, Mom, I don't shop at second-hand stores, Aaliyah sniffed, so sorry, but I can't suggest anything. Ash, who was polishing the windowsill at the time, had to make a huge effort to hold back tears. Endure, she told herself mentally, you have to put up with this for Liam's sake. However, the young woman made up her mind. As soon as she had the chance to rent her own place, she would certainly take it. After all, Ash had a sense of dignity too. It's easy to judge when everything is handed to you on a silver platter. Unlike his sister, Anderson behaved more amicably. Surprisingly, the businessman's plan proved to be correct. The young man did indeed lift his spirits. He enjoyed playing with the boy, and it seemed as if he didn't even notice his wheelchair. Anderson and Liam would head to the gym to play ball, and the boy was thrilled with his new friend. Is Liam being too much of a bother? Ash asked. He's like that. Once he attaches to someone, it's for keeps. Let him attach as much as he wants. Anderson smiled. You've got a great kid. He is great, she nodded with a smile, filled with maternal pride, boundless love, and that's something uniquely maternal. I never became a father, Anderson thought bitterly, not to mention my poor Lily. For a moment, their eyes met, and Ash blushed. Anderson looked at her in a way no man had before. Ash had certainly thought Peter found her attractive, but now she realized he was only interested in light, uncomplicated relationships. So such looks were out of the realm of possibility. It's possible to imagine all sorts of things, she chided herself, so he looked, and what of it? He has eyes, so he looks. After all, he lost his wife and unborn child. So, such looks at a woman with a child are quite natural. Meanwhile, Anderson's gaze remained fixed on her as Ash asked her son, Liam, are you hungry? Noel baked some pancakes. With condensed milk? The boy exclaimed. If you want, you can have them with condensed milk, his mother nodded. I suggest we head to the kitchen and enjoy them together, Anderson smiled. His smile was almost conspiratorial, and Ash found herself feeling cheerful too. I don't like these pompous breakfasts, lunches, and dinners in the dining room, the host's son said. The kitchen is cozier and more intimate. I agree, Ash responded. 
So, how about a cozy kitchen meal? Anderson winked. Let's have a little get-together. Cool, declared Liam. I think so too. And I'll join the majority, Ash said with a thoughtful tone. The cheerful trio enjoyed their pancakes not only with condensed milk, but also with cherry jam, chocolate syrup, and sour cream. These are delicious. Praised Ash. They're so lacy and the flavor is delicate. Mine always turn out thick, no matter how hard I try. Mom is a real master at making pancakes. Anderson proudly confirmed. And not just pancakes. That's true. Ash began to say, but she didn't get to finish her sentence. What a perfect little scene. They heard a snag voice. All three turned their heads towards the kitchen entrance and saw Aaliyah. The girl looked at them with a smirk and was clearly preparing to say something unpleasant. And she did, you're like one big happy family. Aaliyah, stop being ridiculous, Anderson frowned, Ash and I are just good friends, nothing more. Oh really? Aaliyah asked skeptically. So the lady obviously has ulterior motives, right, Ash? Have you mistaken me for someone else? Ash couldn't hold back and immediately regretted it. After all, she was living in the home of this girl's parents, but there are limits to everything. Oh, and we can bite. Aaliyah drawled. Just don't break your teeth on us. Well, I won't disturb you further. The girl left the kitchen, and Anderson waved his hand dismissively. Don't pay her any mind. Aaliyah can be a handful, but she gets over things quickly, Ash nodded, and he added, You know, I actually think you two might become friends. That seems unlikely, thought Ash. I don't understand why she's so worked up about you, Anderson wondered, maybe she's jealous. Jealous of what? Ash sighed inwardly and pondered the reason for Aaliyah's dislike. It was clear that it had something to do with Peter, but the question was what exactly Aaliyah knew. If Johnny had told his daughter what kind of person her fiancé was, then it indeed would be jealousy, and a foolish one at that. If Peter could behave like this, Aaliyah should be aware that nothing good awaited her with him, and she should understand that. Or is she that naive? The second option was that Aaliyah didn't know anything. Well, that would excuse her, but it didn't make things easier for Ash. She was already feeling uncomfortable. Ash leaned towards the second option. Johnny must know that this isn't his secret. Although, if he had told his daughter everything, it would be easier. The thought gave Ash a headache, and she winced. Are you feeling unwell? Anderson asked with concern. My head is just aching a bit. Then you should lie down for a while. After that, I've got a little surprise for you. What kind of surprise? Ash asked, intrigued. Well, if I tell you what it is, then it won't be a surprise, will it? Anderson laughed. The surprise turned out to be a picnic outing. For this purpose, Anderson had persuaded his father to lend him a driver, and he gladly obliged. Johnny could hardly remember the last time his son had shown such interest in anything, let alone become excited about an idea. Anderson, Ash, and Liam drove in the car, enjoying the scenery. Sometimes, it's the little things that make a difference, Ash thought. Just appreciating the beauty of nature can instantly lift your mood. People have forgotten how to find joy in the simple things that, essentially, make up our lives. Lost in these thoughts, she didn't notice how they arrived at a charming wooden house. Although in this case, the term house seemed a bit of an understatement. The single-story home was spacious and very cozy. Do you like it? Anderson asked catching Ash's admiring glance. Very much. She replied sincerely. I do too. He smiled, but then a shadow passed over Anderson's face. This house was probably built or bought to spend time with his wife and the child who never came, Ash realized. Well, come in and make yourselves comfortable. The host invited with a playful bow. The house was warm and smelled of something meaty and incredibly delicious. Thank you, Dolly. Anderson thanked the petite woman whom Ash had initially overlooked. Always at your service, Anderson, she smiled. Please, join us at the table. 
Anderson said with a satisfied grin. The table was laden with appetizing dishes and drinks of various colors. It's almost a shame to eat such beauty. Ash remarked. I know, right? He agreed. But I don't know about you, but I'm starving. So, folks, we're going to have to demolish this beauty, aren't we, Liam? Yes, the boy agreed. Out of the mouths of babes comes truth, Anderson remarked, and the three of them quickly began to enjoy their meal. The food was excellent, but as it turned out, the guests were in for some outdoor fun. Liam was squealing with delight as he slid down the slide, while Anderson and Ash watched him with smiles. Ash herself felt a strong urge to try the slide. When was the last time she did that? Back in her hometown. The thought of her native city brought tears to her eyes. After the outdoor fun, there was a sauna, ice-cold beer, and incredibly delicious berry juice for Liam. Ash suddenly had a strange feeling that they were like a family. What a strange thought, she mused, surprised at herself. Mom, I'm tired, her son interrupted her thoughts. Yes, of course, Anderson nodded. Come on, buddy, let's get you settled. Ash was about to offer to do it herself, but realized that Anderson might not appreciate that. For him, it was very important to feel independent. I wonder if there's any hope that Anderson might walk again? Ash thought. With their money, nothing is impossible, but doctors are not gods. All set, Anderson said with a smile, the sauna definitely did Liam good. Not just the sauna, but also the outdoor games. Yes, exactly. You know, when I was watching you, I really wanted to join in, but... Tell me, Anderson, Ash asked, bracing herself, is there any hope? The doctors say there is, he sighed, but it's just hope. No one can give exact predictions. What if nothing comes of it? Is it worth chasing hope that might turn out to be false? Anderson's words carried a lot of sense. But Ash had always believed that one should seize every opportunity. You know, Anderson, she said quietly, I lost both of my parents. They're gone for good. But you're here. So why not try? You're a very smart person, and I believe you'll be able to handle a possible unsuccessful outcome of the surgery. But personally, I have a feeling that everything will turn out well. Do you really think so? Anderson asked with hope. It seemed to him that if Ash believed in it, then it must be true. After all, it wasn't by chance that the Almighty had sent this extraordinary girl and her son into their home. Yes, Ash replied with a disarming smile. Well, I think I'll give it a try, Anderson said after a moment's thought. Then he suddenly added, you're very beautiful. What? Ash said, surprised. Beautiful, Ash. Really? And may I ask a question? I'll preface it by saying, if you don't want to answer, you don't have to. What's the question? What connects you with my sister's former fiancé? And why do you think there's something connecting me with him? She asked, pretending to be surprised, while Anderson shook his head. Ash, Ash, it seems you're not very good at lying. Is that so bad? It's wonderful, he nodded, but don't avoid the question. Ash pondered for a moment. Maybe I should really tell him about my relationship with Peter. After all, we've become such good friends. Isn't it natural to share this story with a friend? In the end, it should be Peter who feels ashamed, not me. And Ash replied, You've understood everything correctly. Peter and I are indeed connected. More precisely, someone connects us. Peter is Liam's father. He left me when he found out I was pregnant. I'm sorry, Anderson said, feeling embarrassed. I didn't mean to hurt you. You didn't, she replied. That's all in the past. Besides, I have such a wonderful son. I can be grateful to Peter for something. You can't argue with that, his friend agreed with a smile. Johnny Clark sat in his office, thinking about Ash, who had unexpectedly entered their family's life. He realized that Anderson had feelings for her. And, to be honest, he wouldn't mind if things worked out between the young people. 
After all, the child even calls him Grandpa Johnny. The young people were enjoying their time in Anderson's house, and Johnny Clark sincerely hoped that Ash would like it there. The businessman recalled that they were returning this evening, and he felt warm and content. Only Aliyah. There was a knock on the door. Yes, yes, come in, the host of the office called out, and the door immediately opened. Standing in the doorway was a smiling Aliyah. Maybe it's time to talk to my daughter, Johnny Clark thought. But it's not right for people to feud over practically nothing. Hi, Daddy, the girl said cheerfully. Oh, hi, hi, if you're not joking, the father replied with a smile. I actually wanted to talk to you. Oh no, Dad, Aaliyah waved her well-groomed hands, that can wait. I'm going shopping and wanted to ask you for some money. I hope you won't refuse me. Have I ever refused you? Johnny said, looking at her affectionate expression. It's not so easy to say no to that. Aaliyah laughed. Since early childhood, she had learned to make such a face that it was hard to refuse her anything, whether it was the biggest rose on a cake or a sum of money. Who knows how it would have been if their family had counted every penny. But, thankfully, it wasn't the case. Shopping is a serious matter, Johnny Clark said with playful irony, so let me get you some cash from the safe. I have too many tabs open on the laptop, and I left my phone in the other room. I don't mind. Cash will do. I'm not a princess. I'll just transfer it to my card myself. Well then, that's great, the father concluded, standing up from his desk and going to the safe. When he entered the code, he barely managed to contain a shout. With a practiced eye, Johnny Clark noticed that several stacks of money were missing. What's going on? The businessman muttered. I may not be young anymore, but I'm still far from senile. What's wrong? Aliyah asked with concern. Well, the man clutched his chest. It was hard for him to speak. What happened? The money is missing. Missing? What do you mean missing? There are some stacks of money missing. Are you sure? I'm sure. I wonder where it went, the father sighed heavily. Well, maybe you spent it and forgot. Thanks, daughter, Johnny said with a sad smile. Are you delicately suggesting that it's time for me to retire? Well, yes, Aliyah nodded. Sorry. Or maybe it was stolen. Who would do that? There are no thieves in my house. Who can say, she retorted. What about that girl, Ash? No, no, the father replied. How could she have gotten in here and even known the safe's code? You never know. Maybe she's a professional thief. She spots a wealthy guy, makes him feel sorry for her. In the end, she doesn't have to steal the money herself. Our guest might have accomplices. There are plenty of con artists these days, and you know it. Aliyah, what nonsense! Johnny exclaimed. If I fell for the tricks of fraudsters and others, I wouldn't have lasted a day in big business. Even the best can have lapses, she said. I hope you don't take it personally. These guys are always coming up with new schemes. And where did you get such deep knowledge? He asked with a smirk. Johnny didn't want to believe that Ash was involved in the theft, but on the other hand, Aaliyah's words had a point. Fraudsters did seem to appear like mushrooms after rain, along with their methods for swindling ordinary citizens. But instead of speculating, it was better to find out for sure. Then we'll call the police, the head of the family side. He really didn't want to do that. Why call the police? Aliyah countered. Let's check her first. If we don't find anything, then we can involve the police. Let them sort it out. In the evening, when the trio finally arrived, Johnny, Noel, and Aliyah were already waiting for them in the living room. What's going on? Anderson asked, noticing their glum and clearly troubled expressions. Yes, something has happened, the father nodded. Please, have a seat. Ash, you stay too. Liam, you go to your room for now. After waiting for the child to leave the room, Johnny Clark said, This is very serious, so I won't beat around the bush. A large sum of money is missing from the safe. 
And do you have any suspects? Asked his son. Well, to be honest, yes, the businessman replied awkwardly. Don't get me wrong, but... Dad, you said you wouldn't beat around the bush. Yes, we suspect, Aaliyah said indignantly, turning to Ash. Do you have anything to tell us? I have nothing to tell you, the young woman replied quietly but firmly. After all, how long could she endure this? For her son's sake, she had tolerated humiliation, but being accused of theft was going too far. Nothing to tell, the homeowner's daughter asked sarcastically. I have nothing to say, Ash said firmly. If you wish, search me. And we will search you. Aliyah, maybe we shouldn't do this, Noel suggested. After all, nothing has been found on Ash yet. Exactly, yet, Aliyah sneered. So what are we waiting for? Ash challenged. The money was found in a bag under her bed. Everyone in the room stared at Ash as if she were about to disappear into the floor. The young woman felt like she was in a nightmare. This can't be happening, she said in bewilderment. Oh, so your accomplices were supposed to hide the money but didn't manage to do it in time? Aliyah asked sarcastically. I don't have any accomplices, Ash replied. And I didn't take any money. Johnny Clark, do you really think I would repay you for giving me a roof over my head and a job like this? The young woman looked at the old man with such hope that he was almost willing to believe her. But how could he ignore the fact that the money was found in a bag under her bed? I'm very sorry, but you will have to leave, the man said in a choked voice. I won't tolerate theft in my house. There are respectable people who come here, and I would hate to be embarrassed in front of them one day. I hope I won't have to repeat this again. You won't have to, Ash assured him. I don't want to go, Liam protested when his mother told him they were leaving. Honey, we have to, Ash said sadly. It's just that Grandpa Johnny is expecting important people, and we need to leave. Will we come back here later? The child asked hopefully. Yes, probably. The things were packed, and it was time to go. Ash suddenly felt a sense of deja vu, only now she and Liam had to leave in the evening. Everything was the same, darkness, cold, and the host's children. Oh, those host's children. When they went downstairs, the family was in the living room. Only Anderson was missing. Ash understood him, though she was honestly disappointed. Did he really believe that she had taken the money? Have you lost your mind? She thought to herself. Who else was he supposed to believe? We should check if she took anything else, Aaliyah said disdainfully. Then check, Ash retorted, what's the problem? No, look at her, she's even smirking, Aaliyah said contemptuously. Aaliyah, not in front of the child, their mother pleaded. And why not? Aaliyah retorted defiantly. Let him see what kind of mother he has. Everyone calm down, Johnny Clark barked. Aaliyah, be quiet. And you, Ash, I ask you to leave my house as soon as possible. I am very disappointed. The young woman walked down the street, holding her son's hand, just like before. However, this time, Ash's situation wasn't as dire. She had money. Johnny Clark had given her an advance. So they could stay in a hostel. This should last us three or four days, and then we'll figure something out, she thought. And there's a shuttle. I don't like it here, Liam declared as soon as they stepped into the room they would be staying in. Me neither, his mother thought, but out loud she said. It's okay, sweetie, we won't be here long. What else could she say? So, brother, it's hard to be disappointed in people? Aliyah asked sarcastically. Anderson was sitting in the living room, flipping through a magazine, staring blankly at it. It is, he sighed. But it's kind of strange. What's so strange about it? Ash has nowhere to go. Why would she mess things up like that? Well, maybe, his sister exclaimed, she was hoping to rent a place with that money and live comfortably. Maybe you're right, Anderson said after a moment of thought. It's quite plausible. But why do I still feel uneasy? Of course you're right, Aaliyah said with a touch of wisdom. Anyway, 
I'm going to bed. Good night, her brother replied absentmindedly, wondering, how was the money discovered? Father rarely checks the safe. Just as he was about to voice his doubts, their mother came down to the living room. Noelle's face was pale, and her hands were trembling. Dad's had a heart attack, she said in a strange, detached voice, and weakly sank onto the ottoman, hiding her face in her hands. What? the children asked in unison. Dad's in really bad shape, Noelle cried. He must have been so upset by what happened. I called an ambulance. Aliyah gasped, covering her mouth with her hand. Johnny's life was not in danger, and if not for his depressed state, one could say he was holding up well. Aliyah, however, had spent the entire night awake. Yawning, she came down to the kitchen, where her mother was sipping coffee and staring blankly into space. You're up early today, Noelle remarked. The girl, who worked in interior design and set her own schedule, was not known for her early rising. Early, the girl repeated, with a sad smile. I didn't sleep a wink all night. You're not the only one, their mother replied. But thank God Dad only had a slight scare. But you know, dear, I can't stop thinking about that girl, Ash, Noelle said, frowning. Honestly, I don't believe she's a thief. And this story with Peter. I had a guilty thought that maybe he was involved. Peter, the girl was surprised. Why would he do that? To get revenge, Noel shrugged. Revenge for what? For driving him away from our house. Speaking of which, Aaliyah recalled, I'm trying to figure out how she managed it, but nothing useful comes to mind. Now it was Noel's turn to be surprised. I thought you knew, said their mother. Otherwise, why such a harsh attitude towards the poor girl? Knew what? Well, Peter is the father of her child. He left Ash when he found out she was pregnant. Are you serious? Aaliyah was stunned. However, the guilt she felt was even stronger. Oh God, what an idiot I've been, she thought. What have I done? And her mother had only poured oil on the fire. The poor girl had to go through so much. First, her father died, and when she and her mother were evaluated to our city, her mother fell gravely ill and died. After a lot of struggle, she managed to get citizenship, worked wherever she could, and then came the encounter with Peter, the pregnancy. Noel recounted the trials and tribulations of Ash's life. Aliyah felt worse and worse. Listen, you idiot, scum, she berated herself. You had everything handed to you easily. Now you know there's another side to life. And all because of that bastard, Peter. What a piece of work. Yes, it's awful, Aaliyah said after hearing her mother's story. It's hard to wrap my head around it. Mom, she said, I need to confess something. Aaliyah, can it wait? Don't you remember we're going to see Dad soon? It has to be now, Aaliyah insisted, or I won't be able to later. The thing is, it's hard for me to admit, but... Ash really didn't steal any money. It was me. You? But why? To frame her because of Peter. Oh my God, what have you done? Yes, Mom, I understand that I'm a terrible person, the daughter admitted sorrowfully. Even worse. You can kick me out of the house, and I deserve it. You fool, you fool, Noel shook her head. I want to be angry with you, but I can't. And do you know why? Because, actually, you did well. Don't exaggerate. No, really. Admitting something like that isn't easy. But you did. Do you think we should tell Dad? Of course we should. The question is when. He'll be glad, but such strong emotions aren't what he needs right now. So, we'll see how things go. Johnny was in excellent condition, as if there had been no heart attack at all. You really scared us all. Anderson joked, lightly chiding him. Well, as they say, you won't get rid of me that easily. Johnny laughed, clearly in good spirits. The family enjoyed their time together, but it was evident from Aliyah's face that something was troubling her. 
She debated whether or not to tell her father what she had done and eventually decided that nothing too terrible would come of it. Dad, I need to talk to you alone, Aaliyah said. Oh, that sounds intriguing, he replied, surprised. You little fool. Johnny Clark said affectionately, looking at his daughter with warmth. Well, you've given me the most precious gift you could, and it meant a lot to me. Not just to me. You nearly broke your brother's heart. I was aware of that, Aaliyah smiled. But I would still have given you a good talking to. For precaution. Where did she go, by the way? What's the problem? Just call her. When Ash saw Johnny Clark on her phone screen, she frowned and ended the call. Respectfully as she might have felt toward him, she wasn't going to let him walk all over her. Liam, I'm going to take a shower, she said to her son. Okay, Mom, Liam replied. When Ash left, the phone rang again. Hello, the little boy answered, sounding businesslike. Hearing Grandpa Johnny's voice, he was thrilled. Okay, got it, I'll let her know, he said before ending the call. That day, Aliyev came personally to pick them up in her car and apologized profusely. The women celebrated their reconciliation at a cafe and then went to the hospital to see Johnny Clark, who also apologized so profusely that it made Ash feel embarrassed. Anderson was over the moon with happiness. I won't let you go anywhere anymore, he said, looking into Ash's eyes. Three months passed. The family was celebrating a double occasion. But before the celebration, many things had happened. Anderson had undergone surgery in another country. The operation was successful. The first tentative steps he took with Ash's help were now considered the most important moments of his life. Of course, there was also a rehabilitation period, which Anderson managed with honor. How could he not, with the beloved woman by his side? The day before their departure from the country, the young couple sat by the dam and stared thoughtfully at the water. It's beautiful here, Ash said, but I still miss our places. I almost want to say my homeland. But where is my homeland now? Wherever your heart is, Anderson replied. They were silent for a moment. Ash. Yes? Will you marry me? Are you joking? Why? I love you, and you love me, don't you? Are you still asking? Ash pretended to be offended. So what's the problem? There isn't one. Of course, there isn't, she exclaimed. But does it really happen like this? It does, Anderson said with a smile, pulling Ash close. But you haven't answered my question. Will you marry me? Haven't I answered? The young woman laughed. Yes, I will marry you. Aliyah's personal life was also changing. She had joined a new fitness club where she experienced a pure and bright feeling. Her beloved became her instructor, Roy, who was as handsome as Apollo and as kind as an angel. The feeling was mutual, and within a week, Roy and Aliyah began dating. The happy heiress found that before she knew it, her beloved had proposed to her. Ironically, this happened on the same day that her older brother proposed to Ash. The brides were beautiful, and so were the grooms. I always dreamed of having my wedding on the same day as someone else's, Aaliyah confided to her new sister-in-law. Once, my friend Nora and I dreamed of this, but life turned out differently. Nora married a foreigner and moved to another country. Well, Ash smiled, what wedding on the same day? Are you upset? At first, yes, the relative nodded. But now I think it turned out even better. To have a new daughter-in-law and become a sister-in-law on the same day, well, not everyone gets that. That's for sure. Bitter. Suddenly shouted the guests. Perfectly timed, Anderson remarked, otherwise our brides might have forgotten about us. The couples exchanged kisses, and the newlyweds smiled at the young people, reminiscing about their own wedding day. They could never have imagined that their children would celebrate their weddings on the same day. Aren't they all just lovely? Noel smiled. Looking at them, you can't help but believe they'll be happy. They will be, her husband replied confidently. 
I think so too, Liam, sitting beside them, added seriously. See? Johnny Clark said with a smile, out of the mouths of babes comes the truth. Fireworks exploded in the air.